This is a tale of two cities, one symbolized by skyscrapers belonging to the rich and famous, looking down upon the other, a downtrodden, decrepit, urban slum, quarantined from the first in a world of socio-economic apartheid. This is also a story about burgers and bun kebabs. The burgers in the story are represented by Salim Burger, an 11-year-old boy from an affluent family from Lahore. The bun kebabs are epitomized by Salim Bun Kebab, the son of a maid who has worked for Salim Burger's family for eons. As young children, the two Salims were joined at the hip, playing together, eating together, falling and getting bruised together, even doing their homework together. But the last few years of intense social conditioning have left them suspended into separate worlds, dazed, confused, and asking some pretty tough questions. Salim Berger. I am told that my religion teaches us equality and social justice. Why then do my maid and her children have to eat from different plates and use different utensils? Why do I get to eat the meat my maid cooks while she only eats dal roti? Why am I not allowed to sit in the front seat with my driver? Salim Bankabar, does bottled water really taste better than the tap water I've drunk all my life? Sometimes I wonder, what is in that green bottle that Malik Saab hides from Begum Sahab? Hmm, he must really like that grape juice with the, with the cigarette. Salim Berger, our politicians will tell you, will tell us that we live in a free country. But am I truly free? How I yearn to escape from my golden cage and play gully cricket with the street kids, barefoot in the rain, eating gola ganda and slurping lassies. But my life has become a mobile cocoon, one moment whisked away from home to school, the other moment from school to home, but never able to step outside my cocoon and spread my wings, my metamorphosis incomplete. Selim Bankabar, laptops, iPods, Playstations, Razor scooters, these are but the toys of my imagination. Yet I'm surrounded by them whenever I go into Salim's bedroom. I see them, but I can no longer touch them, or feel them, or even play with them. On his 12th birthday, Salim Berger invited all of his friends to his birthday bash. On previous occasions, he and Salim Bankabab had celebrated their birthdays together, hurling birthday treats at each other. But now that he was older, Salim Berger found himself silently and passively observing his friends making fun of Salim Bankabab's broken English and his baggy pants. Humiliated, Salim Bankabab retreated to the back of the room, excluded and forgotten. That night, both Salims sat awake, tormented, their celestially conjoined souls cleaved apart. An anguished burger wondered how and why had he colluded with his friends in the marginalization of his childhood friend. What had happened to that innate sense of fairness and social justice he had as a five-year-old. Was he also going to simply write a check every year like his parents did and wash his hands of this problem? Had he become part of a fringe elitist minority that was looking from the outside in, into a world where four billion people earn less than a dollar a day? Or was he actually on the inside looking out at a world that he had chosen not to see? Salim decided he had to do something. He drifted off to sleep and began to dream. What if all of his classmates in his elitist school were to be twinned to all of Salim Bang Kebab's classmates in their NGO school, creating a lifelong relationship where they could, as part of their school curriculum, collectively tackle deeply rooted social problems such as poverty, pollution, and child labor? What if they could co-create an art and music and participate in games and athletics together? What if they could break out of their bubbles rise above the society that divided them and see both worlds as one. Salim's dreams grew even more vivid. What if each of Salim Berger's classmates were to extend a microloan to their twins that would take care of their health and entire education? A microloan that could be repaid once the twin had a job and a stable income into a fund, the world's first child-to-child -child microfinance fund, so that other twins might benefit from this in the future. The system 
of socio-economic apartheid that is so firmly entrenched in Pakistan and in other developing nations, and indeed in some parts of the developed world, is a system that was built by our colonial fathers. But it is a system that we have perpetuated. And in fact, it is a system that we must collectively dismantle. Denied opportunity, devoid of hope, stra stranded at the bottom of the socio-economic pyramid, our country's youth seeks refuge in religion and oftentimes succumbs to the temptation of violent extremism as a means to restore their battered self-esteem as well as to escape from their reality. We must ask ourselves, if we want to change the trajectory of Pakistan, and we know we can, we know that we can make this country successful, we need to realize the full potential of all of our disenfranchised youth. We need to enlighten our kids to break out of their bubbles, to experience the real world outside of those bubbles. And we need to enable our low-income, um, disenfranchised and underprivileged children to unleash their talent and to be able to really get out of those boxes that they've been boxed in for so long now, so that they may collectively move for our country together forward towards a brighter Nairjivan. Ultimately, we may be able to abolish social, socio-economic apartheid and build bridges, sturdy, durable bridges that may cross these socio-economic divides and actually be able to deliver us to a place where everyone can live and breathe and be treated equally. For that, though, we really need to rely on the collective genius of our children, all of our children. Thank you.